everyone. It's time for Sunday school again. This is for Sunday, January 9th, 2022. It still seems very odd to say 2022. Um, but here we are in this brand new year. And it's been an interesting one so far. This snow that we have right now is beautiful, but it sure did put things to a halt. Um, I was traveling back on Thursday from uh, the Huntington area where I was supposed to go to a school and then come home that afternoon. But their schools let out three hours early. I think Upshur County did as well. And then of course the snow hit, I think it started about three um, in the afternoon, may have been a little earlier than that. Um, and then we didn't have school on Friday. So I ended up coming back early, which um, I missed a day of work, but in my schools, but it was good to get home ahead of the storm and to travel that way. Well, we're going to talk about people who traveled to see Jesus when he was born. And uh, you've heard of them before. They're the three wise men. And this story didn't take place right after Jesus was born. It was a good time later. It might have even been a couple of years later. Um, people aren't really sure about when that happened. But we're going to take a look at what might have happened then. <clears throat> put my glasses on so I can see. And uh, we do know that Jesus was no longer a newborn. So he was probably, could have even been crawling, might have even been walking. But let's go ahead and read the scriptures. This is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, Behold, wise men came from the east, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. So let's talk about who those wise men might have been. Now they weren't quite kings the way the song mentions, you know, we three kings of Orient are Maybe not kings, um, but they were really magi. And that comes from a Persian term uh, called Magupati. And they were probably priests in an Eastern temple, and they studied astronomy and signs. I think you've heard of astronomy, maybe, and that's stars. But these men weren't Jewish, but they knew really about the scriptures. And they recognized how significant this star was that they had seen. You know, and that's really important because we realize in this story that God revealed himself to all people. Even those who were far away physically from the Jews and also those who really didn't have the same beliefs as the Jews. So they were far away physically and spiritually from what the Jewish traditions were. And that's a really important thing to remember, especially for you and for me. <clears throat> well, the Magi were willing to travel quite a distance to come and worship Jesus, to find him. And it was at great expense to them to do this. So what do you know about stars? Do you ever go outside at night and look up and try to see the constellations or a special star like the North Star? Do you think God can really use stars to guide people? Well, I fully believe that. So let's go on. This is Matthew chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Well, I don't know about you, but if I were King Herod, that would have made me a little nervous hearing about another king. And it made him nervous. And honestly, he was very jealous and he was a little bit crazy. He didn't like the sound of another king coming to Israel, so he kind of prodded at the Magi, the wise men, and as well 
prodded his own wise men with some further questions. They had explained, they explained then that they had been guided to Bethlehem and they knew of the prophecy from the book of Micah that promised that Bethlehem would be a significant place. <clears throat> have you ever taken a long trip? I'm pretty sure you have. I know several of you have been to Disney World, and that's all the way in Florida. Well, what do you have to do when you prepare to make a journey? We've talked about this before. You have to pack certain clothes. You have to plan your route. And you, hopefully your GPS is working either on your parents' phone or the one that's in your car. Well, the Magi didn't have all of those things that we have. They didn't have a McDonald's on the side of the road. They didn't have rest areas to stop at. They didn't have cars, they rode on camels, and they worked hard to come to Bethlehem. And when they got, you know, to that area, all that they got was an angry king in King Herod. Hmm. So what King Herod did was he told those magi to find Jesus and bring him back to the palace. And he said, he wanted to worship the king, but we know that that was not his true intention. Let me read you some more in the scriptures. This is verses 7 through 9 in Matthew chapter 2. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. Now, you've heard the story. Herod didn't want to worship Jesus. He wanted to get rid of the child. He thought Jesus was a threat to his throne. After all, these magi were calling him a king. But the Magi went on their way and they followed the star right to near the place Jesus was. And it's really hard for us to know exactly what was so special about that star or how they knew that it would be exactly where Jesus was staying. <clears throat> but they found it. And they found Jesus. And the star shone on Jesus and told the Magi where to find him. You know, our job as believers is kind of like that special star. It is our job to shine God's light into the world so that other people can know who Jesus is, so that they can know the joy of knowing Jesus, and so that they can worship him just like the Magi did. Well, what would you do if you were at the end of a long journey and you found what you were looking for? Would you bring a gift with you if you went to see Jesus when he was a baby. The Magi were so excited to reach their destination. They worshiped Jesus and you know they brought him special gifts. They brought him gold and frankincense, which is a, a kind of a aromatic fragrance um, oil, and myrrh, which is used to prepare bodies for burial. You know, remember this, that these Magi, these wise men, were not people who had waited for Jesus' birth their whole lives. They weren't like the Jews. They didn't know of a Messiah. But they still recognized the significance of Jesus' birth. They gave their special gifts out of joy and out of gladness. Jesus came for the whole world, not just a few people, not just the Jewish people, not just for Israel, but he came for everyone, for you and for me. Let's keep going in our scripture. This is verses 10 through 12. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. <clears throat> so the Magi, the wise men, followed the star, and they were rewarded by finding Jesus. 
the savior of the whole world. Their lives were made complete in Jesus, finally, just as ours are, just as he makes our lives complete. So we also should be willing to do whatever it takes to get to worship Jesus with our lives. And we can also rejoice in those chances we have to share Jesus' love with other people. Now, I want you to remember in this scripture that God spoke to the Magi again, not just through the star, but in a dream. They, he gave them a dream that warned them not to return to Herod. God was, of course, protecting Jesus. You know, Herod was really furious when he found out that the Magi had gone home through an alternate route, and he did some really bad things in that time. God had already told Mary and Joseph to run from Egypt, so Jesus was safe from Herod. But, you know, Herod's selfishness and his jealousy and really his craziness caused great painful destruction and sorrow. And we can do that ourselves when we're selfish and when we are jealous. Let me read you some other prophetic scriptures that lead us to this story. These were in the Old Testament, and they told about the coming of Jesus. This first one is Micah chapter 5, verse 2, and this is the one you heard in the Matthew scripture throughout our reading here today. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathath, you who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from old, from ancient days. Here's one from Numbers, chapter 24, verse 17. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, a scepter shall rise out of Israel. It shall crush the forehead of Moab and break down all the sons of Sheth. Psalm 72, 11 says, May all kings fall down before him, all nations serve him. And this one from Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 3, I think is just one of the best scriptures there is. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And his nations and nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. I love the story of the three kings, of the wise men, of the magi. It's one of my favorite songs that we sing. And I have some great piano um, arrangements for We Three Kings. And it is a good reminder that they were led by the star, the star that rested over where Jesus was born, to find this baby, this king who would rule. Not like kings rule when they um, are in charge of armies or whole countries. But Jesus became the king of our hearts. And that, to me, is one of the very best things that we could ever imagine. I have just a little bit of a craft for you today. I have drawn a, not a very artistic star, but I don't know. It'll work for our purposes. I've just freehanded it on this piece of um, cardstock. It's a little thicker. And I drew another star inside of it because what I'm going to do, and I don't have any tissue paper right now. You'd think I would after Christmas, wouldn't you? But I'm going to cut out this star. And I'm going to kind of make it a almost a sun catcher for my window. <clears throat> so when I cut this out, it's going to be, um, this cardstock's really nice because it keeps it nice and thick. It's nice and thick paper. And so it makes it easy for me to, um, for it to be sturdy. So I'm going to cut out the big star. I'll show you that in a second. I don't know if you can see the back. I messed up really badly on the back. I, I like to draw. I'm not super good at it sometimes, but if I take my time and uh, I just think about what I'm doing, it's a little bit better. 
but I like it, so I do it anyway. All right, so there's um, there's my star, the big star. So now I'm gonna try to, now if you're doing this at home, why don't you have your moms and dads do the cutting, especially of the inside of the star, because it's a little harder. I'm trying to be careful not to cut my fingers. I think I've got it though. Um, so now I'm gonna cut the inside of the star out. What that's gonna give me is a little star frame almost, almost like a picture frame. And what I'm going to do, um, like I said, I don't have any tissue paper left, but I'm going to, I might have some downstairs in my bedroom. I'll have to look. I didn't think about that before I came up to, to video this lesson for you. But this is a pretty cool thing. I actually have some of these that my kids made when they were little. Still that hang on my Christmas tree every year. So once I get, you see how that's coming out of the middle? and it's gonna be a little bit of a frame. I'm gonna take some tissue paper and I'm going to glue it to the back of this frame. So you won't be able to see right through the frame anymore. It'll just be a nice tissue paper behind it. So there's my star, we'll get it, there we go. There's my star, I'll put some paper behind it. I'll even show you what it's gonna look like. It won't be this, it won't have writing on it, but and it'll just be in this part. So I'll cut it out the shape of the star and glue it to the back of the frame. And then when I hang it up in the window, um, the light will shine through the tissue paper. And that will remind me of the importance of the star and how, remember, it led the shepherds to the, to the baby and it led the wise men to the baby. And that will be our reminder as it hangs in my window that we are to arise and shine, for our light has come. Let's pause for prayer. Father, I thank you so much, once again, for your word and for all of the things that you have to teach us in your word. We're so grateful for it. Father, I thank you for the wise men who followed the star to find Jesus. But I also thank you that when they met Herod, they realized through you that they should not go back to him. We love the way that you protected Jesus from King Herod and the way that you protect us as well. God, help us remember that we are to be your light now. Because of the light of Jesus that is in us, we want to be your light to the world. Give us chances to show your way and to show your love as we love and care those for those around us. God, we love you so much and we thank you for it all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks, everybody. As always, I love spending time with you with our Sunday school lessons. And I hope you're having a good week. I hope you got to play in the snow a little bit. I love you. I will see you the next time. Talk to you soon. Bye.